In section four, I'm going to talk about daily stress. Um, so it's going to be like minor stress that we have it like every day, like, I don't know, ticket violation. I mean, parking violation or like yesterday, I was just parking my car on campus at MDIC and someone did like hit and run, like literally they hit my car and they ran. Um, so. I had a hard time just finding that person because GSU police officer, they didn't um, accept to just check the cameras because uh, like they were just saying that, hey, you have to just ask your insurance to just do the investigation and all that. So it was a crazy situation, but it was a daily stress, right? Because like it was a minor one. It wasn't a damage for me. It was a damage for my car, uh, but it did bring me psycho psychological stress because I was just getting really anxious and angry because I feel like, okay, this is like police responsibility to just check the camera, but they didn't. I did have physiological changes, which means like my stomach just feeling like kind of funny. And also I was just sweating a lot because I was just mad again. Uh, physical symptoms, yes, I did. Ha I mean, I had some pain uh, for some reason uh, in my chest. It wasn't like heart attack, but I was just frustrated like how someone could just hit your car and just just go i mean i mean they could just at least just leave a note for me and just say hey i don't know this is my number and just call me and if they would be a student i would be fine if they would be a college student because i can understand that i mean they cannot pay for that and all that but yeah um but just you know running away it just kind of coward i don't like that um use of healthcare services this is not my case i mean yeah but um i had all of them almost except the last one but in general daily stress can just cause you all of the four aspects of a stress keep that in your mind and try to find an example from your life so this way you can understand it better so effects of early stressful uh life experiences this is just very important the neighborhood that you're gonna grow up is just very important because uh, like if would be if it would be like low SCS neighborhood or a very bad neighborhood with like high crime you would just hear shooting guns like every day seriously there are some neighborhoods like this so you wanna just have um, anxiety all day every day right or if for example if you would be very young your parents are let's say going through a divorce. Um, then you have to live with your mom. She is a single mom. She has to just work outside all the way. You're going to be very sensitive about even like mild stressors, about like taking an exam or about even just talking to your boss or your colleagues. Because like you, you did have like that kind of bad experiences in your childhood and it's going to impact your current uh, mental health as well, if that makes sense. Another point here is even your parents' experience, like your parents, they did have a bad childhood. It can pass on you, like they can just pass those kind of bad experiences to you. It is not genetics, it is like their behavior because like they actually grew up in a bad environment. They actually picked up some bad negative health habits. You're gonna actually see them and you're gonna actually pick up those habits as well observational learning we we talk a lot about this in developmental psychology but like that kind of um disruptive behavior gonna develop in you so if you are a parent first of all you have to be careful about your own bad health habits your own um early uh, stressful uh, life experiences this way you can just prevent your kids to just develop those bad habits um so in general it seems like the adversity they can include uh for example they, they could be low socioeconomic status they can be exposure to violence gun shooting or um i don't know fighting all the way in the street living in poverty and a bad neighborhood and uh community level of stressors so if you are coming from a minority or for example nowadays um jews they are just suffering a lot from like all the negativity out there. So if you are just from that community, you can just relate a lot to that. Or at some point, and even now Muslims, they are just suffering for all those problems that is happening because like if few people from that community, that can be like generalized to just everyone. Or I'm Iranian, there are like 
some very negative narratives out there about Iranians, which I have nothing to do with that. But like, whenever I'm just talking about my background, people, they, they are like, I mean, they don't mean anything, but they go like, oh, you're Iranian. You're just so nice. I didn't know Iranians, they can be nice because of the media. They are just always trying to just put negativity out there about Iranian. Um, so, I mean, they like people who are saying that, oh, you are so nice. They don't mean anything bad to me, but like, I feel like, okay, wow. So they had a very like bad narratives in their, in their head. So that, that can just upset me sometimes, but this is like that kind of community level of stressors that's going to pass to my kids as well, because I mean, they do have my genes, um, and they're going to be partially Iranian. So yeah, um, it can be very stressful at some point. Um, so what else, um, in general, children, um, who actually grow up in risky families, like, um, like the ones that I was talking, uh, they, again, they might overreact, um, they, they might, they, they might overact to mild stressors. Like I said, they might actually have some sort of problem with emotion regulation or social skills. Yes, they can. Whenever I'm just actually, uh. I, I used to practice clinical psychology, and I remember that um, children from uh, risky families, they cannot even open up about their childhood sometimes, or they would have severe anxiety when they want to just talk about even like their simple problems, or even like why they are upset at some point. They cannot directly communicate. They are doing like passive aggressive behavior, like either if you are upset with something, um, they would just upset you as well. Like they would just do a negative behavior. So this way they would just hurt you as well, or they would just keep it to themselves. And at some point they would just react in a very bad way. That actually uh, leads us to the last point, which is going to be reactivity to stress. We already talked about that. Reactivity is going to be a spectrum. Everybody is different to the same stressor. Um, someone might be very high. Uh, I mean, their response might might be very high to a bad situation. Someone might be like very chill to the same situation. So, uh, but like that kind of reactivity can bring some sort of physical problem, like cortisol level, or uh, chronic inflammation and all that. Okay, chronic and stressful situation. It is just very bad. We already talked about that, and and it's gonna seriously kill you from inside. You're going to develop um, some sort of psychological and physical illness. You're going to actually show a lot of health problems inside. And um, in general, it is just very hard to study chronic stressful situation or people who have like chronic stress uh, in their life. Because like, first of all, they are not that kind of people who go to the lab and like consent to be experimented. Um, second of all, um, just understanding what factor literally led them to develop this behavior, it's just very hard because there are always so many factors. It's going to be a started from one, but like since it is like chronic, you cannot just understand which one is just more powerful because this person is just so fragile all the time. Guys, just studying stress, it's just very interesting, seriously. If you would just understand the idea of a stress, you can address majority of problems out there. I would say someone who is stressed, someone who doesn't have a good mental health level, and someone who is fragile, they would develop like so many symptoms, like serious fun. So yeah, take this chapter very seriously. Studying workplace stress, it's very important because you want to spend at least eight hours every day at work. Um, so like, like the best time of your day, it's going to be at work. Um, nine to five, like your prime time. So if you would just, if you would be not satisfied with your work, it's going to impact you in different ways, your health, mental health, um, psychosocial health, and your family and your friends, they are all going to get impacted because of your bad work day. Um, so like. Studying workplace stress is just very important because first of all, it is like your main time. Second of all, it is like big part of your life. And the last one is people are just very concerned about being unemployed. Um, so we have to just address if there is any stress at workplace. 
Um, there are like so many reasons of why um, someone might develop workplace stress. Number one gonna be sedentary lifestyle at work because they are just sitting somewhere and they are just working. It is not good. There should be like some sort of activity during lunch. They have to just go somewhere and eat lunch instead of just sitting here and eat that. I should just sell that to myself because like I'm just working uh, sometimes on campus and I do have my breakfast on my table, which is very bad. And high workload. If you actually uh, threw all the work on one person, they're gonna just be overwhelmed and they're gonna develop a stressful condition in themselves. These two, they are very important, role ambiguity and role conflict. And I would say they are the common problems when it comes to stress at workplace. What is role ambiguity? You basically have no idea about what you should do every day, and you don't have any ideas about how you're going to be assessed by the end of the year, or if it is like monthly uh, or biweekly, like by that due date. This this problem going to be partially on your supervisor or your boss because they have to just literally talk to you about your responsibility first before just ask you to do something. Um, so if you feel like you are just kind, kind of not clear about what to do, you should just literally email them or just talk to them in one to one meeting and just literally say that, hey, this is my potential and I want to do that. What what exactly can I do for just, you know, make this project better or just help with this project? You should you should be direct and just ask them or give me a minute. I talked a lot. Or if you have like a patient who is coming to you and just saying that, yeah, I'm just a stress at work, just try to understand if they have like ambiguity at work or not. And also you have to be clear about how you're gonna be evaluated by the end of that period. Because uh, you might get laid off because of that, right? Or you might get fired because of that. Uh, this is the same case in my classes. I always try to just come up with a syllabus that gonna or just different syllabus, updated ones, like I'm gonna update my syllabus all the time. So this way I just tell a student, this is this is gonna be your due dates. You have to plan ahead. Every Monday you wanna have, for example, a new chapter. By the end of that week, for example, you're gonna have assessment. So everybody gonna be clear. So I'm hoping that no one would have a stress in my classes, finger crossed. Uh, role conflict, this is also very important because it is all about um, your task and like whether you are doing your own task or your task you just conflicted with another one. Um, so like, like you should just get correct information from people. So this way your task not gonna overlap with other people. So it's gonna be role conflict. Majority of problems at workplace are coming from role ambiguity and role conflict. Keep that in your mind. Um, another point is whenever you don't have control over your work, you're going to develop a stress. What is that? For example, uh, you are doing your best, but no one actually see that you want to get a stress or you are doing nothing. But again, you are not getting any feedback. Even for that, you're going to get a stress or, for example, your boss doesn't care about you. Like you don't have any control about the project that you're supposed to do. They are all going to be important and they're going to cause a stress in your life. Demand control support model is just based on the ideas that I talk, role ambiguity, role conflict and lack of control is basically saying that when you do have high demand in your life and low control, uh, they're going to get combined and they're going to come with low social support at work, which is going to cause high stress in you. OK, this is like the whole idea of the model. And lastly, like I said, majority, like like the, the end result of having a stress at workplace, because you are just worried about being unemployed. Uh, what if I wouldn't have job? How I could just pay the bills? I do. I mean, I, for example, finance my car. I mean, my house is just under mortgage. What should I do? Yeah, of course. I mean, everybody just, I mean, yeah, concerned about being unemployed. So I would say that's a good reason to just be stressed. But if your stress is just coming from, let's say, where is that? Uh, one of these two, you have to directly address that. You have to just resolve the confliction or you have to ju just resolve the ambiguity. And you have to get control over your work.
So the outcome of uh, work-related stress, um, you, you're not going to have any satisfaction with your job. You're going to be depressed. Uh, your performance is going to be low, uh, job turnover. Um, and yeah, just being you know upset with your job and just uh, send that bad energy to whoever is just around you, your colleagues. You're going to fight with them all the time. Um, your, your family, your spouse, all of them. How we can just reduce the stress at work? This is like partially for you, but like a big part of that is about your employer. They have to just minimize physical work stressors. For example, even the lighting, it should be good. If you have any plans to just uh, do HR, human resource for your future, memorize all of this. They are very important. So physical work stressors, one of them lighting, another going to be the noise. If like employees, they are just talking so loud or they are just talking on the phone all the time with their family member. If you are in a cubic, the HR should address that. Either they have to just go somewhere else and talk because they are actually can be a distraction for you. Or for example, they like there should be some sound proof space for them as, at some point. Uh, minimize uh, unpre unpredictable stuff and ambiguity. Again, it's going to be HR, but partially it's going to be you. You have to just go and reach out to someone to just help you and clarify the task for you. Involving uh, workers in decision making and um, all important uh, parts of the job is very important. Honestly, whenever we do have, I mean, I'm doing a lot of research and whenever we do have uh, different research projects, uh, I always ask everyone to just contribute. So this way, they feel like they are involved and this way they would have less stress over the project because they actually shared their mind and their idea. And if they had any questions, they could ask. So they are good to go this way. If you would just involve people, you're going to get less stress from them. Um, social relationship at work. It's very important. I'm not a big fan of just being close friend with my colleagues, but. I'm going to have fun with them. We're going to go and have drink from time to time or have coffee or just chit chatting all the way. Cause like, it's very important to just develop good relationship with your colleagues. Cause like, again, you're going to spend like nine, eight hours with them. Uh, reward workers for good work. Yes. You have to just give them bonus reward presents, even a small ones. It can just make them motivated and valued. Uh, signs of a stress, you have to address them before the stress would develop in someone. If you are seeing someone just very like distracted or very stressed at work, or they are just kind of unsure about what to do, you as a boss or you as a manager should just address that. Or if you see look, your colleague actually suffering from something, you should just help them at some point. I mean, don't be nosy, but like help them in a good way. Uh, workplace perks that enhance quality of life. That's important. Um, um, for example, your, your book actually talked about Google because um, like Google actually give you good food all day if you would work there. And I heard that uh, they, they let pets to just be inside of the building. So if you have a dog or a cat, you can just have them here. Um, but I did my internship like before pandemic at Facebook. And now it is meta, but like before it was Facebook um, and the office, it was perfect. Like there, I mean, like there was a big park, but it was a workplace. Like you literally could just go there. It was like, oh, a lot of computers, big monitors. And you could just work there and there, there were like healthy food out there, like fresh fruits, juices. And there was a chef like for every uh, different department, there was a different chef. You would just actually order your lunch in a very, like, whatever you wanted, you would just tell them in the morning and it would be right in front of you. And uh, for me, as a person who is just living by herself, it's just very important to just not be concerned about my meals because I have to do meal prep all the time. But when I was just doing my internship, I didn't have any concern about my food. If I was tired, I could just literally sleep there. There was like a perfect gym, shower, pool everything tennis court so just imagine such a fun workplace um but i can understand in small companies they don't have that kind of perks um so a good way for just uh 
providing perks uh, for our staff or employees, it's going to be just a smaller stuff. Just um, take them for a yoga class or just give them for a massage or even like have like some fun activities like, I don't know, um, some some puzzle games or like something that is funny and interesting for everybody. Just ask their opinion and just put like one hours, um, one or two hours for them to just, you know, talk, have cheap, like have coffee or just play games. Yeah, just give them some fun and it's necessary for workplace. So for the next section and the last section, I'm going to talk more about, let's see, women and their roles.